Hi, everybody. So now let's supplement our discussion of a, the axioms for a group and the few examples that we looked at in the previous video with a series of more examples, because it's when we are going to ask a lot of general questions about groups, but it's very good to have at your fingertips a collection of representative examples so that if you want to get a sense of whether something might or might not be true, you can compare it against your examples and see if it has a chance of being true, or if maybe one of your examples that you know can immediately tell you that whatever it is you think is true can't be true for all groups. And so let's start this process by going back to the integers mod n. But this time, I want to think about the binary operation of um, multiplication instead of addition. So I'm going to think about z mod n for some integer n bigger than 0. And um, I'm going to use the, uh, the operation of my binary operation is going to be multiplication. And I'll just remind you that the product of congruence classes is the congruence class of the product. And so if z, if n were 3, then um, we can multiply the congruence classes of 1 and 2 and get 2. Or we could multiply the congruence class 2 with 2 itself, and we would get the congruence class of 4. But since n is 3, that's the same as the congruence class of 1. And the first thing to observe is that multiplication is associative. And that's because um, regular multiplication is associative. So if we calculate the product of congruence classes A and B with C, well, that's the congruence class of A and B times C, which is the congruence class of AB times C. But since regular multiplication of integers is associative, that's the congruence class of A times BC, which is the congruence class of A times the congruence class of BC, which is the congruence class of A times the congruence class of B times the congruence class of C. So multiplication is associative. That's the first of the three axioms. The second axiom is that there is an identity element. Well, for addition, the identity element was 0. But for multiplication, the identity element is 1. Because if you multiply the congruence class of 1 times anything, you get that thing back. And that's true for all a. So 1 is the identity element. What about inverses? Well, here we run into trouble because um, we have the congruence class. Remember that an inverse means that for any a, there has to be a b so that a b equals 1. And we immediately see that we have a problem because if a is 0, there is no inverse. because 0 times anything is 0. So um, if we just take the integers mod n and allowing 0 to be included, then we know that we don't have a group. because So, so z mod n is not a group because 0 doesn't have an inverse. Well, what if we throw out 0? Well. So, so let's take z mod n z minus the congruence class of 0. Is that a group? Well, we still have a problem, because what if n is 2? Sorry, what if n is 4? Then if you take the class of 2 times the class of 2, you get the class of 4, which is 0. And if 2 had an inverse, well, 
then we could multiply both sides of this equation by 2, and we would get 2 times 2. So if we have this equation, we would have 2 times 2 times x is 2, but the left-hand side is 0, because 2 times 2 we already decided is 4, which is 0. And that would tell us that 2 is 0, and that's a contradiction. So um, even though we, we've excluded 0, z mod 4 is not a group because of lack of inverses. So the way to fix this problem in general is to define u of n to be the collection of A, of congruence classes A in z mod n, with the property that the greatest common divisor of A with n is 1. This is a group. We've already seen, and 1 is the identity element. And the reason for this is we already know that the associative property holds and that we have an identity element, namely 1. And what we have to show is that every element has an inverse. So if we take an A in U of N, we need to know that there, we need to find X so that A X equals 1. And here we get to use a real theorem. We use the Euclidean algorithm, which tells us that if the GCD of A and N is 1, we can solve the equation AU plus NR equals 1. That's what Euclid's algorithm says. It says that if A has no factor in common with N, then you can find a linear combination of A and N, which is equal to 1, or its greatest common divisor. And if you read this equation, you see that it tells you that AU is congruent to 1 mod N. In other words, that A times U is 1. And therefore, U is the inverse of A. And this tells us that if we restrict ourselves to the group U of N, then um, we're going to get a, um, a group under multiplication. And just to uh, maybe look at a, the example of Z mod 4, first, well, we have to take the congruence classes. There are four of them, 0, 1, 2, and 3. But we have to throw away the ones where there's a factor in common with 4. So we have to throw away 0 and 2. So u of n has the elements 1 and 3 in it. And the multiplication table is 1 is the identity element. I'll leave off the brackets. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 3 is 3. 3 times 1 is 3. And 3 times 3 is 9. But 9 is 1, mod 4. And just to give one other example, let's look at z mod 10. This has 10, ele 10 elements, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. But we have to throw out the ones which have a factor in common. To make u of n, we throw out the ones which have a factor in common with 10, which is 0, 2, 4, 5, 6 has the factor 2 in common with 10, 8 has the factor 2 in common with 10. And all we're left with is the set 1, 3, 7, and 9. And if we want to make the multiplication table, one times one is one, three, seven, and nine. 
3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 7 is 21, but 21 is 1 mod 10. And 3 times 9 is 27, which is 7 mod 10. 7 times 3 is 1. 7 times 7 is 49, which is 9. 7 times 9 is 63, which is 3. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 times 3 is 7. 9 times 7 is 3. 9 times 9 is 1. And if you look at this multiplication table, you see that every row has a 1 in it. So the inverse of 1 is 1. The inverse of 3 is 3. The inverse of 7, sorry, the inverse of 3 is 7. There it is. The inverse of 7 is 3. And the inverse of 9 is 9. So this u of this is u of 10 has four elements and every element there has an inverse. So as long as you restrict your congruence classes to the ones which are relatively prime to n, you get a group. But if you try to include all of them, you don't get a group under multiplication because some things won't have inverses.